This is the new Mercedes E-Class and it's a little bit like Facebook. You see it's packed full of all the latest tech, though ultimately it's still going to be mainly used by middle-aged people. Yes, I know I'm middle-aged, but I'm more TikTok than Facebook. And to be fair, this car can actually help me with that. More on that later because I'm going to talk you around the exterior of this car. I'm going to show you the interior. I'm going to try out some of its tech and it's got loads of the stuff. And of course, I'm going to drive it because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Mercedes E-Class. Going to be honest with you, it's more evolution than revolution. It's not huge different to what went before. I really like this chrome strip that runs the full width of the car. It's very posh, very classy. I also like the new tail lights with the three-pointed star soft lighting elements. Very cool. What's not so cool though is this. In fact, wait, bear with me. I need to get a stick, but I can't find a stick, so I'm going to use a long piece of dry grass to illustrate the worst ever fake exhaust pipes I have ever seen. Look, look, look at this. It's, they're not going anywhere. Look, they don't lead anywhere. Damaged my piece of grass. Just completely fake. Why bother? Moving down the side, alloy wheel sizes range from 17 inches to 21s. These are the 20s. And I quite like this multi-spoke design with diamond cut edges. You've also got the poppy outy door handles like on the S-Class. More on those later, right? Because I need to tell you something about those. And around the windows on this particular car, it's gloss black. I think it would look a lot better if it was chrome, like the back. I'm sure you can get it in chrome as well. Here at the front, once again, very familiar as an E-Class, though there's a whole new grille design because look, it's sort of surrounded by this black mask. Is that sort of a hangover from COVID days and having to wear masks? I don't know, not so sure about that. And the grille has lots of little Mercedes stars in as well, in case you didn't know what brand of car it was with the other stars. Anyway, price. So Mercedes hasn't announced the exact pricing yet, but it's going to be similar to the current car, a little bit more expensive. So I reckon it'll start from around £50,000. Now, if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price for your next car, you need to go to CarWow. And you can do that by clicking on the pop-out banner up there or following the link in the description below. If you want to do all that at a later date, just simply Google help me car wow and we will not only help you buy your next car for a fair price but also sell your current car for a fair price because all you have to do is upload some photos give a brief description then dealers all across the country will bid on your car it's easy here on the inside the new mercedes e-class's dash is dominated by the optional super screen so in the EQS, you can get something called the hyper screen, which has three integrated screens behind one piece of glass. Here, you have two huge screens behind one piece of glass and a separate digital driver's display. Like I said, this is optional though. As standard, you get the digital driver's display and a single central screen. The E-Class, regardless of what you go for, has the new MBUX system, which is their newest operating system. It's all pretty zippy, nice graphics, and you have plenty of apps, including third-party apps, which you can download. So this has TikTok, it's got Angry Birds, it's got Zoom, more on that in a bit. And of course, if you don't want to use Mercedes system, you've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are completely wireless, and you get it full screen as well, which is nice. Another thing they've done to this car is change the Hey Mercedes Assistant. So now you can select a function when you're the only person in the car and then you just ask questions to Hey Mercedes without saying Mercedes. The only problem with that is can that- say it again, please? I knew that would happen. Cancel. The only problem with that is that if you're like me and you sometimes talk to yourself, then the car will start talking back at you, which could be annoying. Anyhow, let's move on to the digital driver's display. Very, very clear. Lots of different screens and menus you can work through using the controllers on the steering wheel. And you can change the view between Sport, Classic, and some other items as well. Plus, just like the S-Class, you have the option of a 3D effect, which you can turn off and on. You won't be able to see it on camera because you need to have like two eyes to see it from different angles for the 3D effect. But it really, really is quite cool. I like it a lot. Overall quality in here is pretty blooming nice. Oh yeah. You can have different materials here. Instead of this silver, you could have piano black, but that'll scratch. Or you can have wood. I quite like it with wood, I think. There are a few bits that feel a touch cheap, like that stalks here. 
don't know what plastic that is. It's like they found the cheapest plastic in the world. And that's annoying because you use that quite a lot. Still, I do like Mercedes drive select lever up here. It's just where it should be. It makes it so much easier when you're maneuvering. The plastic on the door handles also is just a little bit cheapish feeling. Once again, it's a shame because you do touch that quite a lot. Also, the sun visors, they feel like they're out of some kind of really cheap small hatchback. It's a shame. In terms of the steering wheel, that does feel nice. Though, as with other Mercedes steering wheels, I don't like the touch sensitive buttons because often you just brush them and then you'll be changing stereo, turning up the volume, or just messing with the functions when you really don't intend to. As for the storage, you've got big door bins and they're lined with felt so things don't rattle about and there's plenty of room in them for bottles and stuff. Then underneath here, you've got a decent sized center console, two USB-C ports there, then here you have your cup holders which have these grippers in them so they can hold thin or fatter bottles there's also a place there for charging your mobile phone and if it's not working or it's a little bit slow like it sometimes is you've got some more usb c's there too finally under here it's your glove box which is a decent size and look there's the air freshener which blows through the ventilation system. This particular scent is called Freeside Mood. Or should that be Freeside Mood? Yeah! Last thing to mention is a seating position. In this left-hand drive model, yeah, I find it perfectly fine. And I always go to reach there. <laughs> Keep forgetting Mercedes have it on the door. I actually prefer it on the seat, to tell you the truth. But there's plenty of adjustment in the seat and the steering wheel. And being a Mercedes, of course, this E-Class has an electrically operated steering wheel. So pretty good here in the front. Now let's find out what it's like in the back seats. There's plenty of space for rear passengers here in the back of the E-Class. So the driver's seat is in my ideal driving position. And as you can see, sat behind myself, I've got loads of knee room. Headroom, that is all right as well. Not loads of it, but then this car is fitted with the panoramic glass roof, which I'll just open now so you can see. And these always just reduce headspace a little bit because of the mechanism involved with them and the blinds. But yeah, people over six foot will be fine back here. Special mention to these seats. So the seat bases are really deep and that means you've got lots of under thigh support. They are very comfortable. They're comfy in the front as well. There's plenty of room in the foot wells too. So it doesn't really matter. There's this huge hump in the floor because when it comes to carry three people in the back at once, there is still enough room for everyone's feet. And while this central seat is a bit of a perch, there's still just about enough headroom and the car is wide enough to accommodate three adults in the back at once. If you need to carry a child seat, well, the good news is the Isofix anchor points are so easy easy to get to and there's loads of space back here that you will be able to fit a bulky rear facing seat as well. In terms of other features we've got some big door bins once again lined with felt, some posh airplane style pockets on the seat backs. This car has the four zone climate control so even rear passengers can set their own temperatures and underneath here there are two USB-C ports for mobile phone charging and quality does extend all the way back here. Feels very nice though once again there are a few elements that feel really cheap, such as this plastic around here. Why do they do it? It's just such a shame. We've also got this, look, an armrest with no cup holders, just taking up space instead. They are hidden here. That's for your mobile phone, by the way. And there's your cup holders. It looks like a face. And if you need to carry longer items and people either side, there is through loading for your skis. One last thing to check. Will it pass this test? Do the rear windows go all the way down? Not if the ignition's not on. Try again. Yeah, they do. Yep, this car, it's pretty spacious in the back. However, if you need even more room, check out my review of the Mercedes S-Class by clicking on the pop-out banner up there or following the link in the description below. You can get the new E-Class with a hands-free tailgate which you can open just by swinging your foot underneath the bumper and you can close it by doing the same thing. Nothing particularly new, but it's handy if you've got you know, arms full of shopping. Plus look, you can get an electrically deployable tow hitch. Oh, it looks like the car's extremely pleased to see me. Hmm, it appears this car has no load lift, which is really handy and unusual for a saloon. Makes it easy to slide things in and out. And that'll be especially handy when you're carrying really longer items, which you can do in this car when you fold down the rear seats, look. But there is a reason for there not being this load lip. 
and that's because this is one of the hybrid versions, the 300E. You see, if you have a normal Mercedes E-Class, the boot capacity is a rather impressive 540 litres, which is slightly better than the boot capacity on the new BMW 5 Series. And if you want the full details on that car, click on the pop-out banner up there, for the link in the description below to watch my video on the all new 5 Series. However, this hybrid version has batteries underneath the boot floor. As a result, its boot capacity is reduced to 370 litres, so quite a bit less. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the new Mercedes E-Class. While you can use your phone as a remote key for the car, and the car will open when you come close to it, or not, Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And this illustrates the problem with these doors. You're never entirely sure whether they're going to do what you expect them to or not. Yeah, it's so press there and it should open. And now it doesn't, now it doesn't, now it does. Then other times they're sticking out like that and you go to open the door, but it actually doesn't work. I'm faking it right now because it's temperamental and sometimes it'll let you in, sometimes it won't. Look, now shut. Shut. No. Yes. <sighs> Honestly, they do my head in. Also, I wonder what happens if you just use your phone and you know, you run out of battery. Does that mean you're scuppered and can't get in your car? The super screen may look cool, but you get hideous reflections in it. Look, I'm going to just drive forwards and backwards and you'll be able to see what I'm seeing now. I'll start route guidance to Fortum Charge and Drive India PBT Limited, N11, Sector 24, kilogram for you now. I have absolutely no idea what any of that was about. I think she's completely mad. When it's really hot on a day like today, and the sun shines on this metallic button, it actually heats up and it gets very hot. And you end up just resting the tender part of your arm on it like that, and you get a bit of a nasty shock. You always have to carry this charging cable bag around with you, which eats into the boot space, makes it even smaller. And you have to attach it onto this leash, like some kind of wayward dog, otherwise it'll roam around the boot as you go around corners and stuff. Oh, that was harder than it needed to be. Oh, it's too hot. It's a little bit disappointing that the sunroof only opens like that. You think, do you know what? I imagine it would hinge, but surely it will slide back as well if I press the button again. But it, it just shuts. So really, this is all it opens. Just this, just this here, look. That little gap doesn't slide back. Oh. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. You can get the new E-Class with a dash cam, but unlike other dash cams, which face outward to film the road ahead, it faces at you so that you can make zoom calls. Obviously, you can only do those while you're stationary. Well, with video, you can do zoom calls just with audio while you're driving. Also though, you can use it to film yourself for just, I don't know, if you're a car reviewer. I can bring up this camera and now record. So let me give you my verdict on the new Mercedes E-Class. Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, to find out the answer to that, you're gonna have to wait to the end of the video. Ha 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 ha. Oh my God, that guy is a brilliant car reviewer. You can get the new E-Class with rear axle steering, which will turn the back wheels by up to 4.5 degrees. When you're going slowly, the rear wheels will turn in the opposite direction of the front wheels to make the car more maneuverable. Then when you're going at high speeds, they'll turn in the same direction as the front to make the car feel more stable. You might think this second screen for the passenger would actually really distract the driver, especially if the passenger is watching a movie on it. However, the car has some special technology where there's a little camera in that instrument binnacle which monitors the driver's eyes. And if they glance across, then it uses special privacy technology, which means that you can't view that screen then from an angle. So if the driver looks across, it's like looking at someone in the HR department's computer screen when you go visit their office. You can't see what's on their screen, whereas the person sat dead in front of it can. Clever. You can get the new E-Class with something called Dolby 4D Atmospheric Sound. Basically, that means you've got 21 speakers in here and you also have special exciters in the seat. So they vibrate to give a sense of bass going through your body as well as the pumping tunes coming through the speakers. And on top of that, the ambient lighting in the car flashes to match the music. I'm just gonna play something through the stereo now, so bear with me. 
Mercedes likes to automate as much stuff as they can and they've automated the air vents. If you press this button here, you can actually set where the air vents are pointed. So I'm gonna make it go to my head. There we go. I think I'll have it on the upper body instead. I'm listening. I wish you would just shut up. And then you can just make it do different things. Look, it's averted, it's out my way, great. But you can still move it with your hands. And the good thing is with individual, you can basically have someone jump in your car, mess around with the air vents, then you get back in it and it will reset them exactly where you want them. Ah. The new E-Class is available with a wide range of engine choices. So there's the E200, which has a two litre turbocharged petrol with 200 horsepower. Then there's the E200D, which has a two litre turbocharged diesel with about 200 horsepower. Then there's the E450, which has a three litre straight six turbo petrol with 380 horsepower. Then we come to the plug-in hybrids and the E300E, which is what this car is. Two litre turbocharged petrol engine mated to an electric motor for 310 horsepower. Then there's the E300 DE, which has a two litre turbocharged diesel engine mated to an electric motor and 310 horsepower. And then there's the E400E, which has a two litre turbocharged petrol engine with an electric motor, though more power, 380 horsepower. Now, all versions of the E-Class come with a nine speed automatic gearbox and you can get a mixture of rear wheel drive or wheel drive or an option of both, depending on which model you go for. As with other Mercedes plug-in hybrids, you've got quite a decent sized battery pack almost 20 kilowatt hours, which is good for a range of around 70 miles on electric power alone. Also, you have DC charging of up to 50 kilowatts, which means you can charge it to about 80% full in just 30 minutes. Anyway, let's take this car for a drive. Starting off within town, and I seem to be driving to what looks like a dead end. I think this is just a cycle path. This is, yeah. Okay, <laughs> good start, but we've got the surround view cameras here, which are really helpful when having to go back on yourself like this. Well done, Matt. It's a good start. The definition of the screen is brilliant, and the little camera at the back pops out when you're using it and then goes away again afterwards, so it doesn't get dirty. And it, look, you've got a little tow hitch view as well. Now let's see if the rear axle steering helps me when manoeuvring to be pointing the right way again. Can I UE in here? Do I think I can do this? Yeah, there's plenty of space. Well, that does turn quite nicely. And the steering is nice and light. <sighs> there we go. Plus, this car is fitted with adaptive air suspension and it really does just have a floaty feel to it. I'm trying to seek out some bumps to test it, but it's just hiding them so well, even when I'm going over manhole covers. And of course, this being the plug-in hybrid, it's been running in electric only mode. Even when accelerate quite hard, it stays on electric power until the last minute and then the petrol engine kicks in and then once you lift off, it just cuts the engine. Now this particular road is pretty bad, but yeah, the air suspension is still doing a great job. Really is relaxing to drive this thing. And being the plug-in hybrid, it's even more so just because it's so silent and effortless. As you pick up speed in this car, and the engine kicks in. It's really quite unobtrusive. It's very quiet, just there in the background doing its thing. And the car itself, when you're going at higher speed, the sound insulation is good. There's not too much road noise. It really is a relaxing car to travel in. I'd like to tell you what it's like when you throw it through some bends, but I can't because I'm just basically driving around the suburbs of Vienna. But for this kind of work, it's really good. And this is where the plug-in hybrid makes so much sense because you can just plug it in at home, charge it up. Really, you hardly ever have to go to a petrol station. And this is the reality of most people's driving, isn't it? Stop, start traffic in town. And so most of the time you're doing it on electric power. Speaking of which, sometimes with hybrids, the brakes can feel a little bit grabby, but these are pretty smooth. You don't notice the transition between when you're regen braking and you are using the normal brake discs and pads. I had this thing on the motorway earlier and I was using the adaptive cruise control and it was quite advanced, so it will automatically change lanes for you and put you in the right lane for exiting off at the motorway to follow your satellite navigation. They did get confused once when there was a fork in the road and I really did have to take over. That's the same with lots of other systems, including Tesla's system. Oh look, we have a corner. 
Yeah, I can't really test it yet. <laughs> well, I can tell you that it is relaxing round town. Oh, here's another corner. Doesn't lean too much in the bends and the steering seems quite precise. There you go, here's a speed hump. Oh, it wasn't too bad considering how quickly I was going over it. I must say that the flickering in that screen is really starting to do my head in. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Mercedes E-Class? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, in the case of this particular E300 e-plug-in hybrid, I think you should just go right ahead and buy it. It really is a brilliant luxury family car. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car to make sure you're getting a fair price for it. Thanks for watching.